Hello everybody, uh, we're still uh, talking about the liquid liquid extraction and in this video we'll see how we can do the liquid liquid extraction calculations for a single stage in Microsoft Excel. So uh, what I'm going to do now is quickly revise what we did and uh, kind of uh, see how uh, we can uh, translate these equations into or, or these calculations into equations and uh, steps in Microsoft Excel. So what we mentioned before is that we have a single stage, we know the uh, um, the feed flow rate which is the L node and the the um, composition um, of, of the feed and we know the solvent flow rate and the composition of this solvent and the simple material balance will give us uh, like the overall material balance will say that V naught plus L naught equals V1 plus L1 which is kind of a very straightforward and simple equation and we mentioned before that this will be equal to M and we did the same for the uh, component material balance, once for the solute and once for the solvent, um, which is the X node uh, and Y node, which are the mass fractions um, of the solute in uh, the feed and in the solvent. And this is in the raffinate and the extract, which is going to be equal to X. Uh, um, a M multiplied by M, and um, and as we mentioned, we know the the solute and the uh, I mean the feed and the solute flow rates and compositions, and from this we can tell that we have this is a straight line equation that has two points, which is um, X A uh, Y A and uh, X A node and Y A node and X one Y A one and X M. Uh, which which is gonna be like this this is the operating line the point for L node point for B node and point M is gonna be in between and the location of point M depends on the flow rates of L node and V node and using the lever arm principle we can precisely uh, uh, identify where this point lies on the operating line uh, and once the the point M is in the uh, two-phase region, which is in this region, it will um, separate spontaneously into two immiscible phases with different compositions. And the equilibrium relation is what we mentioned before as the tie line. And this uh, cuts the the uh, the raffinate layer in L1 and cuts the or intersects with the extract layer line on uh, or, or at point V1. So V1 and L1 are the outputs which are this and this we can we can calculate the flow rates and the compositions from the liver arm prints the compositions are, are easily um, got from the graph uh, we can know xc and uh, xa uh, and yc and ya of course for for both both points um, and from the lever arm principle, we can tell uh, by dividing this length by the whole length, we can uh, know the amount of L1 uh, or L1 divided by M and the, the same for V1. Uh, using the lever arm principle. So this is uh, how how we do the calculations manually. It seems like very simple, um, and uh, but, but the point here is that there is one uh, tricky thing here when we do these calculations, which is how we can determine the tie line. Uh, what we know that we have tie lines as separate lines, so they are not continuous lines. I have like five, ten, fifteen lines. So the possibility of having a point here that does not intersect with any one of these tie lines is is high um, you can it's or, or I can I can say that you will be very lucky if you have your your point uh, lying on a tie line because if it lies on a tie line then it's it's gonna be a piece of cake you <clears throat> you know already the the two points on the tie line uh, but this is not the case for most of the uh, times when we do this calculation so when we do this manually um, we try to make the the tie line so so what i do when i do it manually i use my ruler i put it here and i like rotate the the ruler so that it it gets parallel to the closest tie line and this is what i assume that this is a tie line that passes by this point and i can um, draw the line intersect it here and here and then everything is done but this is not the case when you do the calculations on Microsoft Excel because you have to use equations, not just manual uh, drawing of lines. Um, <clears throat> and to do this, we have to keep in mind that the point V1 is uh, intersection of the tie line and the extract layer. And that's why the point V1 or YA1 and XA1 should satisfy the tie line equation and the extract line equation. The same for the raffinate layer, L1 lies on the tie line and on the raffinate layer. So 
um, this has two or XA1 uh, and YA1 should satisfy or must satisfy the tile line equation and the raffinate layer line. So this is this is kind of the tricky thing that we are going to use to uh, to draw this tie line. So the, the operating line is, is so simple and straightforward, but the tie line is the tricky part. Um, because you have you have uh, you have some restrictions here. The the line uh, you have restrictions on three points that must lie on the same line, and uh, that two of them should satisfy two other equations. That's why it's kind of tricky. We know that the the equation of the tie line is a straight line equation, so it's going to be a slope. Uh, multiplied by x plus intercept equals y um, and we will see how we can use this information to do the calculations on Microsoft so let's let's see the software here we have um, we have the information that we know here the, so so we know the equation or the the, uh, the equilibrium relations um, or the I mean the extract and the raffinate layer data which is this and this and I have already um, did the fitting for these equations so that I can uh, represent them using an equation and and we have already uh, the equations done before um, and uh, I have here the tie lines which represent the equilibrium relation and this is what I mentioned before that I have 10 tie lines and there is a very high possibility or probability that the point will lie somewhere in these uh, like um, blank areas that do not have lines passing through them um, so uh, these are the information and th the given information that I have here are the V node which is the solvent flow rate um, and it's 100% solvent, uh, the YC is 100% and this is the, the feed flow rate which is the uh, mixture of the water and acetic acid and the flow rate is 150 kilograms per hour. It has 30% by mass uh, of the solute which is the uh, acetic acid and it doesn't have any solvent so it, it has not uh, been mixed with any solvent before. Um, and these are the informations that I, I have and let's see what I can do. I have here the equation for the raffinate layer and for the extract layer that I got from the fitting so I can use them when I need them. So uh, uh, what I'm going to do is just to put my data here. Uh, so I have um, L node here as 150, Y node equals 450. We have here the XA uh, node which is uh, this y a node uh, or, or x c node which is this um, this is the x or, or the y a uh, node and this is the y c node so these are the information that i know for the x and y's and and i have already the lines um, uh, have have been set up already for for them to draw so i have everything ready now um, for or i have the operating line uh, already drawn um, for the point M, I know it is the sum of L node plus V node. And for the XAM, if, if you revise the equation, it is the, uh, which, which is, so it's, it's kind of simple. It is the amount of, uh, of A, uh, of, of acetic acid, divi divided by the total flow rate, which is going to be the, uh, the the A that came from the solvent, which is this multiplied by this plus, uh, I'm sorry, multiplied by this plus the A that come from the fresh feed, this divided multiplied by this, and this is all divided by the um, total flow rate of the stream. So it's it's kind of simple. The same for the other uh, component, which is the C, the the uh, solvent, which is gonna be the solvent in the feed, which is all the feed plus the uh, solvent in the I mean the in the first solvent and then the solvent in the feed which is zero divided by the total flow rate and um, I think I did something wrong it's multiply not plus uh, so it's 75 so this is the point M and we see it's here and it makes a lot of sense because I know that the the, the solvent is three times the feed so it has to be uh, like three quarters and uh, th this distance is three quarters the total distance so this is exactly 75 so this is this is totally uh, totally right um, and now let's get to the tricky part now I, I have the point M here if we zoom in here the point M does not lie on the tie line again if point M was here then I, 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 I'm done. I, I'm just going to get the two points here and there, and this is going to be L1 and V1, and I'm done. But it's not the case. So what I'm, I'm going to do is to um, 
try to get the points that uh, will satisfy the equation uh, of the tie line, which is straight line equation, and to cut here and here in two points, and to be parallel to the closest tie line, which is this line. So it's 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 very very tricky, and that's why I I have came up I've come up with with kind of a trick that we can we can do. Um, and um, I just want you to bear with me and you'll understand what I'm doing now. So um, I'm going to put the points that I have here. So the point first is the XAM and the <coughs> XCM. So this is the first point, which is uh, the, the point M, uh, which lies on the, the tie line. Um, now I have kind of estimate of the outputs from this uh, from this uh, line. So uh, from my, my just uh, simple logic, I can tell that the point uh, on the raffinate layer is gonna be somewhere here. Um, it seems to be like 14, 15, 16, something like this. So I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna put it as uh, 15 for, for just uh, the the first estimate for for, for now. And I know that this this point, which is here uh, for L1, it lies on the raffinate layer. Uh, so I'm gonna calculate the x for this point. Uh, I mean the y uh, based uh, or from the the raffinate layer equation. Um, so so I, I have here a point that lies uh, that has x of 15 and y of 2.5, which is something around here. This I, I have this uh, cell uh, fill in in orange or if this is orange I don't know what color is this but it's it seems like orange but anyways um, this this is 15 uh, and I know that this is an assumption that's why I'm keeping it with with a different color um, so this is my first assumption my second assumption is gonna be the second point here which seems to me around six uh, seven. Um, I, I don't know, but it, it seems to me something like this. It's it's in this in, the, in this location. So I'm gonna assume that this is seven for now, and uh, and I I will calculate the uh, y from the extract layer equation, and this is what I'm gonna get. Um, and of course, because I'm doing these based on like some simple assumptions, uh, it, it it's not right, and it seems that what I'm assuming is not right. So what I'm going to do now is to calculate the slope and the intercept of the uh, straight line, the tie line, from these two lines, uh, from these two points. A point that I am 100% sure is right and another point that I don't know if it's correct or not. So the slope is going to be um, just simple, slope, the y's and the x. It should be negative, so it's negative 9 point something. And the intercept is the intercept of these and these. And it's 140 something, and this is this is very very logical, and it's important to to have a sense of the numbers because you have to understand that this is a negative slope, and it's a big negative. It's not like 0.1 or 0.2. At the same time, the intercept should be more than 100, um, which which is the extension of this line until it intersects with the y-axis. So these are the values of the uh, intercept and the um, uh, the extract, uh, I mean the, the, uh, the slope of this line. Assuming that what I'm doing is right, then I should have the value of this y uh, equals to the y calculated from this equation. So if I calculate the y from this equation, which is going to be the slope multiplied by the same x uh, plus the uh, intercept. So it's giving me 79 while this is giving me 90. So there is some difference in the values. So what I'm doing now is to uh, calculate the difference between these two, which is represent or which represents the error that I have in the calculations. And what I'm going to do now is to change this. So I'm, I'm, I'm keeping this constant now and I'm changing this value so that this uh, equals zero. So uh, I'm, I'm opening the gold seek now and um, I'm using gold seek. I want this to be zero by changing this, and it's it's now five point something. The the nice thing now that the straight line passes through the point M, and it cuts here at a point and here at a point. So it it now satisfies my uh, uh, my restrictions that this line is. 
uh, or passes by the, the point M and cuts the top section, or I mean the extract and the uh, raffinate uh, lines uh, in two points. Um, but it, it doesn't seem like parallel as I want, so uh, I, I, I might need to change it a little bit. So it, it seems that 15 is more than what I have, so I'm gonna ch it, uh, like make it a little smaller. So I make it 14.5, so everything will, or, or the, 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 the line is not right now, so I have to again do the gold seek and uh, put this to zero by changing this and now it's done you see the line is is changed a little bit so it's tilted more uh, or getting more vertical and it seems to me like it's like, like parallel now so if you look at these two lines the blue line and the dotted black line here they seem to be parallel now and it seems to me that the uh, equilibrium uh, or the tie this this is the tie line that i'm looking for so um, this is all what I need to do. Uh, I, I don't need to do anything else. What I have now is the L1 and D1 and V1, which are the exact values that I am interested in. So I have I had the feed uh, with a flow rate 150 kilograms per hour, um, and the X was 30, and it came out as X of 14.5. So I lost more than 50% of the solute uh, uh, using single stage. Um, uh, if we, if you, or if we are interested in calculating the um, uh, the, the flow rates, uh, I can simply say that this. I know that this is V1, and the V1 is going to be this this distance divided by the whole distance. So it's going to be. Um, I, I can simply calculate it. So the V1 is going to be uh, the difference between V1 or, or Y1. Um, minus, uh, I'm sorry, YM or XM, uh, XM minus X, uh, X1. Um, so this is going to be the, uh, this is for C. So it's going to be YM, which is this, minus YC, which is, uh, I mean Y1, which is this, or X1, XC1, um, divided by the whole distance which is gonna be 92.5 minus which is v1 minus l1 which is 2.4 um, and i'm gonna multiply this by the uh, m which is this so this is the uh, flow rate of the uh, of the uh, extract layer and the raffinate layer is simple is gonna be the m minus the v1 in kilograms per hour so uh, this is this is all what i need to get out of the uh, uh, i'm sorry I, I i like formatting so I'm, i hope you like bear with me so this is um this is all what i need to do uh, or, or what i'm looking for i now know the flow rates and i know the compositions of the two streams coming out of the uh, uh, out of the, the single stage and if you change anything the flow rate of the solvent of flow rate of the feed or the compositions you just need to do this gold seek and everything will be done um, and this is this is all for this video so hope it helps and i'll see you in the next video inshallah goodbye